Have well, I was going to say, have you been to the, have you seen the stadium? Have you seen the renovations that have been done to the outfield? I did. I went there. Uh, they had a, a guided tour. Well, the ribbon cutting with uh, Mark Shapiro and Edward Rogers and. Uh, right. And they, and then they took the uh, media up and they handed out little samples of the, the alcoholic beverages. And I partook in that. Yes. So, the longer we went, the better the place looked. <laughs> <laughs> well, give me, give me your general, you know, do you think people will be excited about it? I think, I mean, if you look at it objectively, $20 uh, ticket for no assigned seat, but you get to go and uh, just watch the game from the outfield. And, you know, as long as you don't mind standing, there's some great spots hanging over the field, hanging over the home and the visitor's bullpen an ability to go to different areas and get something to eat without, I think the lineups that you're going to see. Plus when you're in line, you get to see the game. It's the first time that that's happened. Right. And uh, I really think they did a tremendous job in terms of, you know, maybe a little overboard in terms of the neighborhoods and, and defining them as such, but uh, face it, those seats weren't being used. Most of the time they took out thousands of seats to, to create this. But for twenty dollars, it's like going to a, a, a watch a band for twenty dollar cover. Only mm -hmm. the band is a baseball game, right? And, uh, and they throw you out at, after the seventh inning. They make last call. That's the only downside to it that I can see is that your window, if you get there at game time, is seven, and then after the seventh inning with the pitch clock, it's sped up. All of a sudden, you've got sometimes an hour forty five before they make last call. So I'm right. curious, curious, do they run the risk of having the outfield full and the other parts of the ballpark empty? <laughs> well, they're, they're saying they cut off the, uh, there, there's a, a limited number of the $20 seats that you can get per okay. game. So it's like five or 600, but you know, who knows when they've reached that limit, you know, they, they could say, Oh man, like you're saying, that there's too many people out there, not enough in the seats. So every day we'll say it's cut off and people have to buy their seats. And uh, then you can still go up into the outfield area, but you're paying for more of a premium price for the seats. I, it'd be interesting to see how it works out. I, like I said, I'm going to wander up there from time to time because I'm not on deadline. I don't have any idiot editors uh, looking at my copy and changing the meaning. And right. And so I, I'm going to enjoy this as much as I can. I'm told there are like what they call neighborhoods there, which is, I guess, there are five different places where you can watch the game. Uh, are you allowed, if you buy your $20 ticket, are you allowed to wander uh, in, in the entire outfield? Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> you, I mean, the, the WestJet flight deck was the only one that existed before, and I ranked that when I did my rankings – on uh, on Griff's the pitch, um, I rank the WestJet flight deck at the bottom. So all of the new neighborhoods that they've put in are uh, to me more appealing. And the twenty dollar uh, ticket, you can wander all over. Wow. So it's going to be pretty good. It's, it's going to be a pretty good deal. Now I spent years watching the game from there and did my uh, pre and post game talk shows from that location. What was called sightlines back then. Right. So I have a pretty good idea of what the view is like. Um, there are a lot of people who may not like being in the outfield and watching the game from that perspective. I don't know how many games you've watched from there, but do you like it? Um, I I like the fact that uh, they've moved the bullpen. So whereas down the right field and left field line, the seats were back. Now they've moved the bullpens towards center field and now there's viewing areas that you're hanging right over right field and left field and you're you're like lucky they got at one point they have a 10 foot wire link fence next mm -hmm. to the visiting team's catcher so you can't really fire a loaded beer at them or anything you got to lob it over the fence but uh yeah no in terms of uh the new standing room areas they're closer than the traditional uh sight lines or west jet flight deck they're way closer way more intimate uh the outfielders will be able to hear fans yelling at them so i think and, and mark shapiro keeps grinning when he talks about fans hanging over the visitors bullpen i mean we've seen on a 
uh, an emotional game that they play late in the season, um, the, the reaction that the fan base has. And it'll be interesting to see, but they've hired, I heard from someone when I went out there for that uh, guided tour that they've hired like a hundred more security people per, per game. Oh, and really? I would say that <laughs> they'll be in that outfield area. All the new ones will be in that outfield area. So when we had uh, we had Mark on before Christmas, uh, what he really tried to accentuate was that they were tr- they were changing the feel from a stadium to a ballpark. That was that was really his underlying um, message. Yeah, are they yeah. on the way to that, or is, is it close? Yeah. The thing that he always uh, took exception to at Rogers Center, and with good you know reason, is that. The seating was all traditional. It was it was built as a stadium where, you know, all the seats are facing the field, obviously, but there's no personality to sitting in the in the seats itself. If you go with a group of 10 people, you're sitting 10 across. You can't have conversations with any of them. Right. Um, now you can go find a, a, a fan area like in the outfield. And your group of 10 can have a, a, a great time. And that's the thing about, uh, he also always talked about how with the uh, improvement in TV broadcasting and the up close and the stats packages that you get, that sometimes being at home and watching the game is more enjoyable than being at the field and sitting in those cramped seats and, and mm-hmm. then going back for a beer and missing an inning. Now it might be an inning and a half because uh, of the speed of the game. So that's what I think he means by becoming more of a ballpark than a stadium. You know, when you go watch a football game, it's different. You're watching, you know, the the whole package there, and there's not, not as much conversation. Um, but here he's given more of an opportunity, or the Jays are giving more of an opportunity uh, if you're with a group. And there's so much time for conversation in a baseball game. Uh, that I, I really can see what he's talking about and the improvements have moved forward. Like, even in Cleveland, that standing area in left field, Bob, you know, you've been there, you, yeah. you know, that area. That was sort of what Mark was looking for. And in mm-hmm. Seattle, there's three or four of those areas. I went out there and wrote a column one time because you missed deadline, 10 o'clock start. And it was really, it was a... a, a community of Blue Jays and Mariners fans and everybody was just standing around drinking, having a good time. And that they sent people to every ballpark to sort of uh, harvest the best ideas. And I think they've done a pretty good job. Now we are told that this is only the first half or whatever of their renovation plans. Do you have any idea as to what they've got planned for next off season? Yeah, I, I'm I'm more enthused about this half than the other half because the other half then becomes the real um, money makers where they're going to have like private clubs underneath the stands and you're going to end up, to me, you're going to end up like Leafs games where the period starts and nobody's mm-hmm. in their seats yet, you know? Yeah. And I, I, I'm enthused about this half, but when they start the big the big money projects moving forward, behind home plate. So it'll be all of next year's renovations will be in the underneath and behind home plate area, private clubs and whatever. And I, I think it's going to remove that ballpark feel and become more of a private club feel. Yeah. But then again, that will only be a small, a relatively small percentage of the, of the audience that will be utilizing those facilities, right? Small percentage, but big wallets. And, And also it's the, it's the view that you get, from the center field camera as you get, uh, you know, all these empty seats. Um, True. Uh, and and the ones you're talking about, Bob, are, are still in their seats down the line. You'll see them right. on foul balls. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get it. 